what's up my capricious little kiwis, this is Rob from A Gay Guy Plays and today we are back with another installment of the Weekly Night Wave, the series where we take a look at this week's acts and find the most efficient or most entertaining way to take them on. Now, we technically don't have a Warframe of the Week proper, but we've got something and we also have a lot to talk about on the Weekly Watch List, but before we do any of that, let's go ahead and jump into our Weekly Acts. So first daily we have is Communicator, which is Mark 5 Mods or resources. We have Power Trip, which is kill 150 enemies with abilities. Next up, we have Conservationist, which is our first weekly, which is complete six different perfect animal captures in the Orvalis. We all know I ain't doing that one. We have Unhance, pick up eight rare mods, Sanctuary Researcher, which is complete five scans for Cephalon Samaris. Um, then we have Test Subject, which is complete eight zones of Sanctuary Onslaught. Venus Miner, complete six or mine. <laughs> six rare gems or or in the orb of Alice. we have night terry which is complete 10 nightmare missions of any type and then we have unlock 10 relics um which is our elite weekly as well as night terror now unfortunately there isn't too much overlap however one of the things that i would highly suggest doing um is if you are going to do unhance which is the eight rare mods and you want to knock out your dailies which is your communicator mark five mods or resources as well as power trip you can go ahead and head over to the index and get your rare mods there mark them it'll help your team out and then of course enemies with abilities is just kind of something that you end up doing in the index anyway then we have the two venus missions which are not too hard to take on however i'm gonna be honest with you looking at this list it feels like a bunch of things that i how do i put this it's a bunch of things that I don't really want to go back and do. Like, if you think about it, and maybe it's a good time to kind of do it, um, but I don't really feel like going to Venus. <laughs> and I don't really feel like scanning anything. Um, and I thought to myself, Venus and, what do you call this, Fortuna as well as Cetus, they're all kind of really isolated. I am thinking in my head that maybe it would be nice if like the things that we're going to be coming up to take on um in like railjack or something if they use some of the resources from those places so that we could go back to them and not feel bad about it but i think about conservationist and i think about mining orbs in valis uh mining gems in valis and i'm thinking to myself i was like What's the point? I'm not going to really be using any of these unless maybe it's for um, some of the new parts for like the MOA, maybe some of the primary um, kit guns that we're going to end up getting. But beyond that, I just I'm like, what's the point of even going back there? Same thing goes for the index. I'm like, I really don't need anything from the index. I know some people might need some credits for there or might be missing some mods, but there's really no real reason to go back to these places, which honestly kind of leads leads me to my Warframe of the week, which isn't Warframe at all. It's actually Monster Hunter World and legit. It's just going through there and um, playing all of those different types of missions, going and getting a whole bunch of different types of weapons. For those of you guys who don't know, I do main um, the bow gun. So both heavy bow gun and light bow gun are kind of my go-to in Monster Hunter World. And I'm curious to see if you guys would like some content on that. I'm actually considering doing a video um, entitled things that Warframe could learn from Monster Hunter World because it is really an amazing game. It's got some good challenge in there. It's got some nice feeling progression. All of the weapons feel like they have a lot of depth to each of them instead of just having something that's, you know, spray, spray and pray or, you know, just kind of like blind shooting. It really does take some, you know, mental fortitude to kind of learn the t different tips and tricks with every single one of those weapons um and with iceborne they introduced some new facets to it as well that i'm just like wow there's so much depth to this game and then i get into warframe and i'm like pick any five weapons or any three weapons technically and just go shoot things until they die and then have a warframe that lights things on fire or makes things explode i don't know but technically my warframe of the week is monster hunter world <laughs> I know, that sounds so odd. Um, anyway, one of the things that I do want to ask real quick for you guys, because I think that this is an interesting thing to talk about, is when it comes down to Nightwave, are you guys actively doing it anymore? 
because I'm really not, and I'm thinking in my head that if they did something to the cred offerings, if they, like, offered some better cred offerings, some better, like, evergreen things, like maybe pre-built form of, form of blueprints, um, something along those lines would make me potentially want to play Nightwave a little bit more actively, but as it stands, it just kind of completes when it completes. Uh, so let me know down in the comments below what things you would like to see added into the cred offerings pool because this is just a little bleak to me. I mean, Kuva is great, but there hasn't been any new crazy weapons that I've really wanted to invest into uh, Riven with. Uh, so let me know down in the comments below. And finally, let's go ahead and close things out with the weekly watch list because I have a lot to talk about. Um, let's start with the things that I'm actively watching right now, which is Into the Badlands, and yes, I have finally picked up The Expanse. Um, and I'm gonna be honest with you, both of them are kind of weird. Into the Badlands has a lot of great action sequences, like every single episode has like crazy fight scenes in there. However, the one thing that I will say is, I never paid more attention to fight acting than I have Into the Badlands. Um, because, you know, like, in fight scenes, it gets really, really intense, and the actors kind of, like, have to act like they're fighting. Does that make sense? But Into the Badlands, I've spotted some bad fight scene acting, aka, like, they're doing the fight choreography, but some of the faces are, like, completely blank. And I almost, like, get it, like, you know, some people are supposed to be stoic and supposed to be like, ooh, I'm so good, I'm not, like, giving any facial emotion. But a part of me is like, you know, it, it looks like you have zero effort here, but you're doing backflips and throwing knives and, like, kicking people in the face with the rest of your body. So I don't know, could your face maybe match? Um, however, I am enjoying it. Uh, and I heard that it just gets better and better. Now, the same thing goes for The Expanse. The Expanse is actually really really good it's got a good storyline to it um it's very sci-fi there's a lot of politics there's a lot of war there's a lot of like all of these things going around in the back scenes however the one thing that i noticed with the expanse is number one i don't find anybody to be attractive <laughs> and i know that sounds terrible but it kind of goes along with the second half of this is i find nobody that i can relate to there's no character that I feel like I can, can connect with. They don't like have to be gay or anything. They don't have to be like Asian or anything. But usually there has to be a character that I'm like, you and me are on the same page. Everybody in The Expanse I feel extremely disconnected from. So a part of me is just kind of like, all right, so I can't really connect with any of the characters. And I don't find any of y'all very attractive. So I hope that the storyline is just good enough to keep me hooked because that's all it's got. Um, but I do like it so far. I haven't made it through the first season yet, but I am working my way through it. Um, so I can't give a strong recommendation for either one of them, unless you just like fight scenes and you don't mind people's faces, then Into the Band Lads is definitely a thing. Um, next up, I do have a very strong recommendation that you guys should check out, which is Altered Carbon. Um, it's on Netflix. Uh, season 2 is dropping towards the end of February. And number one, if you haven't watched Altered Carbon, it's fucking awesome amazing number one there's eye candy on both ends of the spectrum there's crazy fight scenes there is a hotel that is alive and has a shotgun i'm just putting it out there it's really freaking fantastic um and they're coming out with season two they've got another person playing the main character which is kind of like how the story goes i don't want to give out too much but anthony mackie would plays Falcon from the Avengers is in it, which was a shocking twist because I was like, wow, that's who you decided to go with? I was like, that's kind of amazing. I'm into it. So I can't wait to see what happens with Altered Carbon Season 2. Um, and then the other thing that I want to kind of like tell you guys about is I finished Lock and Key and I didn't hate it. I didn't quite love it, but I didn't quite hate it. It's like a dark version of like a teenage thriller with weird superpowers. I don't know. It's interesting. Um, and then the last little bits that I wanted to go ahead and cover is, number one, uh, a documentary that I'm definitely going to be queuing up whenever I just need a chill night. It's called Night on Earth. And again, it's on Netflix. Um, so that's definitely something on my upcoming watch list. And then also Train to Busan. I've heard Train to Busan several times. I haven't really looked into it. But for some reason, in my head, I have a feeling 
that it's a drama, but I also feel like there might be fight sequences, and for some reason, zombies? Is that right? Am I crazy? Is does does Train to Busan can like have all of those things in there? Um, and last but not least, I need to jump back onto Amazon Prime Video because I need to watch Mr. Robot. I haven't finished. I think. Or I finished the second season, but I don't think I've watched the rest of the seasons on there. Uh, let me know if it's good, if it's worth watching, if it gets better, if it... Well, I mean, it's already good, but if it gets even better, like, oh my god, Rob, you need to watch it ASAP. Let me know down in the comments below if that is something that you've been watching. Also, if you have anything on your watch list or something that you've tuned into recently that you think that I should definitely check it out, toss it down there as well. And I'm going to leave you guys with one final question. I've been a little bit more active on my lifestyle channel and i'm kind of curious about maybe bringing the watch list into its own separate um thing like just have the weekly night wave be the weekly night wave and maybe we'll find like different topics to talk about each week so that that can stay as like a gaming thing and then bring the watch list over there to become a weekly series just in case you guys wanted to go ahead and have it completely separated because maybe the two worlds don't collide maybe they do i don't know give me your opinions down in the comments below as well as any other videos that you guys want to end up seeing from me uh regardless that about does it for me for now and as always love somebody Hurt nobody and touch your body. I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.